So I will talk about who are the key players and then look at the current synergies and, and interactions, the opportunities for self-testing, and then the roles and responsibilities in getting started at country level. And then we'll look at questions for reflection in relation to, to scale up. So, as I said, the focus of my presentation will be on the interaction, the relationships, and uh, so I speak as a social scientist, and for some uh, technical questions to do with regulation and lab, I have colleagues, Victoria and, 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 and Elliot, who, uh, who will come in to, to tackle those. Um, so we did, so this was part of the, the key informant interviews we did in Zambia, Zimbabwe, and Malawi. But here I'm focusing on, uh, on, on, uh, on Malawi. So, we did those interviews in Malawi, and it was a qualitative uh, study using the, you know, the the the, uh, the, the, the framework, uh, the, the policy analysis framework, looking at that policy triangle, actors, process, content, and context. So it is important to understand the actors that are involved when getting started at country level. So the need to think widely and as much as possible use a snowballing uh, method or methodology. So the policy makers, HIV policy makers, the implementers, the lab sector, the regulators, the, 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 the academia, you know, the donors, the civil society. So all those have to be uh, taken uh, on board. So we talked to, uh, uh, as I said, we talked to people working in the lab sector, uh, policy makers, and the regulatory uh, bodies, regulatory bodies. Now, the current uh, synergies and, and interactions are uh, uh, happening uh, currently among HIV program and, and reference lab in Malawi. Um, but there is less involvement of the regulatory bodies, uh, such the, as the pharmacies, medicines, and poisons board uh, in this, uh, actually when we started. And um, the pharmacies, uh, medicines, and poisons board, they also interact with, with the reference lab at some levels. So for example, when they are doing some post-market surveillance of some products, they engage the, the reference lab. For instance, they, uh, there were reports from the districts that some pregnancy uh, test kits were not producing the required results, so they actually uh, engaged them and conducted some, some tests where men actually were testing pregnant, you know, using those test kits. And so, so that is one of the ways how they actually collaborate. And also the, the pharmacies, medicines, and poisons board, they also work with the, uh, like, would say the policymakers at Ministry of Health. So one of the area where they interact, for example, is where they do drug audits. So they, they, they actually uh, have teams, so they have people from the Ministry of Health, from the police, from the uh, pharmacies, medicines, and poisons board, and do an audit. So for example, like this project is supported by Global Fund to see, uh, to check drug pifferage and, and check how drugs are being used. So those are some of the arenas where interaction is already happening among these key constituencies. So the, we should also understand that the significance of informal interactions should not be ignored. So usually, as we know, as human beings, decisions normally are not made when people sit here, like formally. But when they discuss, they chat informally over a cup of tea. And when they come to meetings like these, they consolidate what they have started. So those informal interactions at, uh, at country level, how people talk, how they meet, they, those are also significant. They are also significant. Um, so the, the three constituencies, the National Reference Lab, 
the uh, regulatory bodies, the HIV department. When we talk to them in terms of how they interact and relate, uh, it was found that, as I said, the, the two, the National Reference Lab and the HIV department, had very close interaction, while the regulatory bodies were less involved in those interactions. So for example, when we talk to the reference lab, uh, one of the, the respondents said, that one is a statutory corporation. It's a separate entity, so what we do is invite them, uh, their members to come and join us in the technical working groups. And when we, we, we talked to the regulators, uh, one of them said it will be key for pharmacy board to really partner with the Minister of Health so that whatever we put on the market is what has been prescribed to be put on the market, uh, to be put on the market. And um, the department itself, the HIV department, uh, one colleague there said, I think the link is quite weak. We don't really have much interaction. So the, here they were referring to the, uh, to the regulated bodies. Now the challenges with the, with the interaction is that, uh, to summarize, the HIV program reference lab, they currently sit on the same committees, for example, on HIV uh, testing, etc. But the pharmacy board uh, who is a regulator, they don't sit there. So at the moment then, there is a regulatory vacuum. As the pharmacy board has no clear mandate, but they are addressing it, uh, they are addressing that. And then there are opportunities for self-testing regulation in Malawi. So one key opportunity is the bill, uh, the Pharmacy Medicines and Poison Board bill, uh, which is at the moment at committee level of parliament. Um, they have had a back and forth, etc. And they are hoping that maybe by the end of this year, uh, they shall have deliberated on it. And the other opportunity is the pre-qualification from WHO and Global Fund Expert Review Panel for Diagnostics. So the capacity strengthening and support interaction between policy reference lab and regulators, uh, that's another uh, that's another opportunity. That's another opportunity. So, the looking at the strategies for getting started, we uh, when we looked at uh, how we talked to these people and uh, interrogated our findings, we saw that there is need to deliberately include funding. You know for the participation of key stakeholders in working groups, you know, that focus on HIV self-testing. And what we have done is that, having identified the challenges, we are working under start to address them. So we are bringing the three constituencies together, the policy, regulator, and lab. We are bringing them together, and we are engaging them through action planning and workshops. We started in, at the lab meeting, uh, ASLM meeting in Cape Town, and we are continuing here. Uh, so we have that workshop today, tomorrow, which would we'll be looking at that. So there is also need to engage more with community health uh, departments uh, and civil society partners involved with HIV testing. So the people who actually reach out to, uh, to people on the ground have to be taken on board in a practical sense. So, in terms of the roles and responsibilities of key constituencies in getting started, at policy level, there is a need to clarify the current policy environment and research needs to inform policy and practice. And the lab have to ensure quality control, so getting informed by initiators of process about the expectations. So, the issue of expectations, I think, is, is very key. And the regulatory bodies have to note capacity gaps within institution and regulatory framework. And clear mandates of responsibility for in vitro diagnostics. So the researchers have to engage policy makers, regulators and lab groups at initial stages and retain the engagement. And the civil society, 
is key because it has to engage the constituencies, the people they work with at different levels, engage communities and create demand. Now, in terms of the expectations, these must be clear. But the question is, who should clarify? Who should make the expectations clear? Uh, opportunities to facilitate scale-up in Malawi, the, the technical working group. Um, at the moment in Malawi, there is not, we don't have a specific technical working group focusing on HIV safe testing. But HIV safe testing is part of the agenda of the, uh, the broad uh, working group, HIV working group that looks at issues of ART, uh, PMTCT, uh, HTS, etc. So, going forward, the arrangement may be different, but at the moment, from time to time when these, uh, this technical working group meets, issues of HIV safe testing uh, are taken on board and presentations are made and deliberations uh, are made. So the, the informants state that research evidence is keenly awaited. And there's opportunity for researchers to engage directly with policy, regulators and reference lab. There is that opportunity. So the process should also engage more with key stakeholders, key stakeholders, such as community health and, uh, and civil society, and health systems operations research uh, uh, going forward is needed to investigate interrogation of uh, integration of self-testing into public health sector. So, for example, in Malaya, looking at how self-testing can be delivered through health surveillance uh, assistance. Now, to reflect uh, on some a few questions, how could we support the capacity of, of, of the pharmacy medicines and poisons world? Of course, one thing we are doing is the workshops that uh, we have talked about. And how can regulation and policy development work in tandem? So we are also addressing this in a regulatory workshop uh, tomorrow. And what about post-market surveillance? Post-market surveillance. And how should researchers and implementers get uh, better engaged with policymakers and regulators? Policymakers and regulators. I acknowledge those colleagues and those organizations for for the input in the process. Thank you very much for your attention.